All right, so I bought this right here for 7904 it says. Um, hydro cable to hydraulic conversion, all right? I'm following the instructions, okay? So everything's together. I got this together. I gotta, I gotta bleed it out. I think I'm gonna use a different reservoir, uh, which I can show you because this one's pretty large and I already have a, a lot of stuff going on in this engine bay. Now, <clears throat> I also wanted to add that this has uh, the newer, I don't know if they call this 9495 booster or with the 93 uh, Cobra master cylinder, but this stuff was found on LMR. So I just wanted to add this in here. This is screwed in where it's supposed to be, but it is very tight against this aftermarket booster. Well, factory upgraded booster. So it makes it really hard to get this in, which I'm hoping I'm not going to need to have it adjusted out that far, which I don't think you will. So we have, I unbolted this to get this to move so that I could get this installed. So this wasn't exactly all fun. I should have did this stuff while I had everything out. All right, I'm gonna get that seated in and then <clears throat> I'll break out the reservoir that I'm gonna use and then I can, I'll show you that getting bled out, which is pretty simple compared to what they're showing. And then we'll get this thing seated in here. I'm probably gonna use a black hose uh, the reservoir that I want to use, it's it's a lot smaller. So I'm going to finish this up, then I can get my booster tightened back up. I still have to switch over. Where's it at? It's hiding in here. And on the bottom, we still got to add in the quadrant because I still have the factory, the factory uh, self-adjusting uh, clutch uh, mechanism up under the dash. Quadrant. All right. There's two two R clips. Have them sitting here so you can see them. And you have a large spring and a small spring. This will be this way when it's sitting in there. So you'll have this spring like this. This actually springs this to pull on the cable. This one when you lift pull up on your pedal it actually lifts this and this comes back down and it's supposed to lock in here to hold tension on your cable all right to take out all the free play all right so you won't use any of this stuff but you need these two arc clips so this if you take notice looks just like that This should slide on just like that, and then the cable will come across and hooks here. So when you pull, you're doing this number, it's pivoted on here. All right, but we need to, I think this one gets installed there, honestly. I gotta double check the instructions, and then you'll use two of these, and one will hold here, and one's for this other part. So I'm gonna throw these in a bag, just get them out of the way. Looking at their instructions, they are showing that white down here on the bottom. So just so you know, I've done a bunch of these over the years. Well, it's been a long time since I've done any. I probably should have did this when I had my steering wheel out. But since we have this here, all right, this is this is what's going on. I still have the nuts off. I didn't put them back on in case I had to actually pull stuff back apart. I didn't want to redo it. All I used was this long pair of needle nose laid up under here. And you can look right through here and you can actually see the location of where everything is at. It's probably a little sideways here on the camera, but that's where we need to go. All right, so here's your new quadrant. Here. Now this back one. Might be a little harder to get on. Because it is actually pretty tight back here. Alright, well. There we go, right on. 
Yeah, like I seen that. That's pretty tight. It's too tight right there. Okay, so this is the fun part. I'm gonna fight them on. And then we'll go from there. Alright, well, after pretty much losing one clip, because it bounced somewhere, um, I had to, uh, actually I sanded down one side that's actually toward the outer part here, uh, sanded down the thickness on that because it just was a little too tight, and I was very careful as how much that I did that, but you can see, now we have full movement in there on that. So I'm going to get the rest of these bolts bolted up on this. And then we're going to work on getting the unit bled out so that we can get it installed. All right, so I'm test fitting this up, all right? And I'm using this reservoir right here. Now, I just cleaned it up because it's used. Now I have this little bracket uh, that it slides onto, which I want to get cleaned up. But I'm just trying to see where um, this thing would sit best. I mean, because like I said, I am really tight on room over here. Um, I was even thinking about seeing what master cylinders would work on here so I could tap into that and use it as a secondary. Um, but I mean, I have this right here. So I could even, you know, maybe tuck it up underneath this and like run a zip tie around the back side of this motor like this come up in here and just wrap a zip tie and then that would hold the reservoir in place so i think that this is going to work out a whole lot better with the smaller one over the bigger one um the only thing that i am wondering is like the capacity for the reservoir, is this going to be big enough? I would think. Um, I think it's going to be like a troubleshooting thing once I uh, once I bleed this out. If it seems like when this is full, it's not squirting it back out of the top and it's actually holding enough, it'll actually work out all right. But this one right here is in comparison to this one here. Now they use this for other other brakes and stuff, uh, but this one here, this is from a, a Dodge Neon um, SRT4 is actually what this is from. Um, I'm not sure what other products Dodge would use this on. Uh, there are some companies that actually make an aftermarket one of these in aluminum, which I even thought about getting something like that, and maybe even getting it coated black, or like I said, getting a master cylinder with the secondary port like they have in the O5s, where the clutch runs off of that also. So. That's always something I could look into too, to try to eliminate a second reservoir because it just, you know, clutters up the engine bag. So I'm gonna pull this out. I'm gonna work on bleeding this kit out, which, you know, their 12 year old video that's on YouTube uh, pretty much explains that quite easily. But uh, I'm gonna get that done, fill this thing up and uh, bleed it out. All right, so there's that. Um, I have the cable routed down out here. This was not enjoyable to get on by any means. But there it is, it's on. I bent that bracket out of the way uh, so I could get up in there. Um, I ended up reaching up in there with this long set and prying out on the cable and then getting it to slide down over <clears throat> I had some slack I had to take out so we worked that out some okay there's our reservoir We're still working on routing this now I'm by myself so I don't really have anyone 
two per se give me a push, um, I have to get a little bit more out of here. Now, I have a problem with this bell housing here. So, I might pull this rod off since it's, it's, I don't know, if it's up, then it's okay. If it's down, then it kind of drags. Um, there's not enough threads here to get this out, which really kind of sucks. So I'll probably have to put some washers behind here and then unlock that, which will get all this, see, if we bring this up, then we have this play. <clears throat> but I think my cable is actually going to be routed pretty good. I'll probably just, I don't know, put some, I'll put a piece of rubber hose around it and then hit it with a zip tie right here. And we're going to have clearance around everything down here. So we'll be all right there. Um, this is a little tight to that O2 sensor. So hopefully that stuff works out all right. Like this here, I need to get... I need to zip tie that over also. So I got a lot of this other stuff here zip tied. Um, I still got to get the ground wire on and some other things. Here's one that needs cleaned up. So I still have a lot to do down here, but this is what we're focusing on right here. And um, this is with, like I said, uh, blowproof bell. I think this is uh, the older Lakewood blowproof bell, so that's why. It's red, so I don't know. Like I said, I can grind some off here and then try to clearance that a little bit and maybe put a piece of something over top. But I was really worried about how any of these would have worked. Um, I, can, I don't know if I'm feeling this when I push on the pedal. I'm sure it takes that slack up, but we want to get, we want to get all of this out of here so that we have a good, uh, a good feeling pedal. Um, I, I had adjustable cables on here and I actually ended up trimming the cable and I would pry this forward with a pry bar and then tighten this down. Um, you know, it's just, it's just with what you have. Um, yeah, so this kind of sucks a little bit, but, uh, when you have aftermarket stuff, you got to modify things, but, um, Really good, really good so far. Everything bled out. Um, I'll add in whatever I come up with. All right, um, getting uh, the hydraulic uh, clutch assembly finished up. Um, it's all mounted in here. We got all the slack, you know, adjusted out where it needs to be. Uh, using the neon uh, mount, I got got the bracket all painted up so I'm just gonna like hang it here I'll probably bend this a little bit because you won't see it I'm just gonna run a zip tie and then stick the cover for that right over top now for this lower piece let's go check this out so you know <clears throat> this is the rod that they give you okay my problem was one it was way too long and it was hitting back here I did Grind the back of that just a little bit But I took this and found a bolt um, I'll show you what the size is here on the label got everything tightened up. There's no very little Very little slack right there. Okay, so we have that out might need to tighten it up just a little bit more I'll have to see if it has any play when it's running because sometimes it'll bounce around So we'll have to see what that looks like. Okay, so <clears throat> The line I got a piece of hose, split it, and I have it wrapped here. Got to finish zip tying this. I zip tied a couple other things. And then I did one up here. All right. So let's just sit the camera here. There's floor. There's up. There's floor. Up. 
So there we go. Um, that's what it looks like when you're utilizing the push. Uh, everything's still, like this is really close to that, so. I might have to uh, do something different here. Maybe, maybe put a piece of rubber over top of that so I don't wear through my wires on my O2 sensor. All right, let's go up top. I'll show you what it looks like uh, pushing on it underneath the floor. Here we go. You can see where we're at. All right, there's that. That's what it looks like when you're pushing on it here. Um, it's been too long for me to be able to have a pedal comparison. Um, these always do ride high. Seeing as I don't even have the seat installed in the car yet, it's a little hard for me to judge how the pedal feel is. And like I said, how long it's been since the other, the cable was installed. But, really curious to see how this is. Um, I'm going to be having the first initial setup. I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of adjustments. I might have to go back over and re-bleed everything. Uh, but that'll be something I'll just have to take care of at the point of that time. But I'm just going to end this video here on that install. Like I said, hopefully this thing works out, man. It's pretty cool.